Well, hello there, my dear friends. Welcome back to the Scott Reed Project. Now, today, a sausage making masterclass, but not so much a masterclass, but a history lesson. By that, I mean we are going to be doing a very, very, very old beef sausage recipe. We're going to be making up our own seasoning. So, this is the days before pre-made sausage seasoning. Gotta say this recipe must be 70 years old. So yeah, quite looking forward to this one. So what I've got here then is some flank of beef, or you can use a bit of brisket, but what you want is a decent fat ratio. As you can see there, plenty of lean, plenty of fat. I've got two and a half pounds of beef there. So what I'm going to do is just put that in there and keep it cold while we prepare the other ingredients. So we've got some rusk, half a pound of rusk. I'm going to add a pound of water. Let me get my hand in there, not mucking about. We'll just let that inflate. So two and a half pound of beef half a pound of rusk, a pound of water. Now the next bit is the interesting bit where we make up our homemade sausage seasoning. Okay then, so back in the day, there was none of this, you ring up your supplier, send us 10 packs of sausage seasoning. They were all made from scratch. All butchers, sausage makers had an amazing knowledge of herbs and spices and they would blend their own, make big batches, obviously use them in the week to make their sausages, the rest would be saved and put in an airtight container and kept away out of direct sunlight and used the following week. So that is what we are going to be doing. So what I need to do is make up this batch of sausage seasoning. So I need to start off with, I've got 15 grams of pepper. Now I want 113 grams, which will make it 128 altogether. 113 grams of salt. The classic sausage seasoning, ginger. 11 grams of ginger garnin. And I wanna put just a little bit, if I can get it open, of sage. Let's put that in, maybe give it a little bit more. Now, you may think that's a lot, but like I said, they would make this up and use it and then save the rest. But obviously you mix it till it's all one uniform color. Have a smell of that. So the ratio then, is 14 grams for every pound of meat. Now I know it can get confusing, he's saying pound and ounces and grams. The thing is, some of these measurements are so small they would not register, you know, like one ounce. So, 14 grams per pound basically works out half an ounce. So, we've got two and a half pound of meat and fat house if you tear the scale so we want 28 35 grams thirty five grams so that there is the sum part of our sausage making so just to reiterate we made up a biggish batch and we took what we needed, the ratio, the rest, like I said, keep it in an airtight container. You can use that. Now, obviously, you can make big batches of this, but if you're going to make lots of sausages, that's fine. If not, don't. Because spice loses its potency after a while. So, I've made a relatively small batch there. I'll happily vat pack that, keep it for a couple of weeks. But, you know... Play it by ear. If you're going to make a load, make a load. If not, 
just a nice little batch like that. So, let's get that out of the way. Right. So, through the mincer, my two and a half pound of beef. So, to that, I will add my 35 grams, I suppose one and a quarter ounces of seasoning. What's that smell like? Now obviously we'll do the usual, we'll fry a bit off and test it, but we get our ruskin. I'm gonna go with that to start with. Because these old recipes tended to be a bit rusk heavy. There's nothing wrong with rusk. I know a lot of people say, why do you use rusk? It's quintessentially English. It's what makes our bangers so good. It retains that lovely juiciness. Gives you a great texture. And it's been used for absolutely forever so if it ends broke baby don't fix it right let's give that a good mix up i'm going to add a spot more water to that and then i'll send it through the mincer one more time just to get a good even distribution that's why i get the rest in balls to it let's do it Okay, so that's been through the mincer a second time. Just gonna add a bit more water because the rust can take it, just to let that mix down a little bit. Now, before any of you armchair sausage professionals start saying, wow, that's a lot of rust, remember, this is not my recipe. This is a genuine recipe from, I'd say about 1947 or at least the early 1950s. And this is how it was made. So, as per usual, try and get that bind on. Is it smelling like? Oh, good. So I will mix this up, get it nice and sticky. Fry a bit off. And see what we got. I do love beef sausage but already I can see from my trained eye you know there's quite a bit of rusk in there but that doesn't mean it's going to be a bad sausage at all rusk is not bad right I'll put that on chill fry a bit off and see where we go from there Okay then, let's have a look at what we got. Like I said, this is a 70 year old recipe. And obviously, just fry off a little patty, have a taste. As I suspected, just a little bit too much rusk. But you gotta put this into perspective, you know, this is a recipe from the late 40s. You know, uh, England was still rationed until I think 1954. So if you had a sausage like this, I tell you, I'd be more than happy. Mmm. Flavours there though. Mmm. Seasoning is really, really good. It's just a good average sausage. You know, I've had worse from the supermarket. But we'll pipe them. I mean, you find when you pipe the sausages and you have them thinner in a tube, I know it sounds a bit mad, but they taste different still but yeah all in all that's a good sausage mm. it's really weird actually because this sausage meat as it is natural just looks like pork sausage but you've got to remember that years ago they would have added a natural coloring pigment they used to add it to their black puddings their Savloys, 
their polonies, to all kinds of stuff, just to give it that tinge, that tint. And nothing's really changed because the sausage seasoning I use has a colouring agent in it, a tint, all natural, nothing to worry about. So yeah, we've moved on a little bit, but not that far. Right, let's get these on here. So I'm piping these into lamb's casings. I really like piping my flavoured sausage into the lamb's skins. So let's just do this. It's not hang about. So some of you ask, how quick can you tie these? So let me just show you. So once you get your basic three lined up like that, put it through there. You can just start looping. And once you get the hang of it, you'll be going quite quick. Obviously you've got to be careful with these lamb casings because they aren't as thick as hogs casings, but with a bit of practice and a bit of time before you know it you can do something like that I'll just finish that one off there tie the skin off looks a bit skanky that bit yeah and there we have those beef sausage so what we need to do then is hang these let them dry let them bloom by that I mean let the color come the skin will tighten round the meat and then we can fry a few off and get a true taste of what they're like. Job is a good one. Okay then, they've been left overnight. Better cook a few of these, see what they're like. Let's get a nice bunch of six and get them in the pan. That there, that there. Good, isn't it? Let's get a little bit of oil in. Then lay those beauties in the pan. Now sausages are one of the most abused cooked items ever. In my opinion, a sausage should be cooked with the same amount of love as a good steak. So nice and steady in the pan. We don't want it burnt on the outside and raw in the middle. We just want them to tick over and take on a nice color. Then of course, we just want to get them down our necks, but Patience is a virtue. Slowly, slowly, catchy monkey. Okay, my friends, time to see if this beautiful recipe has stood the test of time. Right, straight away, you may notice something. They have shrunk. Now this is purely down to the amount of liquid and obviously the rusk we put in there. 
turns to steam, which is how you get your bangers bursting on you. If you've got a lot of water content in there, it creates steam. It's got nowhere to go. So it kind of like just breaks out the middle. But here, as you can see, it's pushed out of the sides. So there was an original size one. There is a cooked one. Look at that, raw and cooked. The health and safety police will not be able to sleep. Anyway, let's get rid of them. The proof, like anything, is in the pudding. So, they're a bit hot yet. They're very soft, obviously, again, due to that rust content. They're hot. They're hot. Really hot. But I'll tell you what. They taste really good. I'm going to get some sauce on that. You knew it had to happen. Makes everything taste better. Okay then, let's sum this up. Has this 70 year old recipe traveled well into the future? Well, honestly, yes and no. The yes part is, it's beautiful flavour, it's got good seasoning, but could do with just a little bit more. The no part, like all these old recipes from, you know, the 40s, early 50s, they were always bread heavy. Remember, we were food rationed for 13 years to 1954, so it was just a case of padding them out. But, if I was to make these again, and I will, I would follow the exact process, so I'd have the two and a half pound of meat, but it'll be that rusk. If you saw the video and, you, and I had that rusk, I was putting it in and I said that I thought it was a little bit too much rusk, you know, you should always go with how you feel, and then I just went balls sweat and tipped the rest in. Because these old recipes tended to be a bit rusk heavy. So I get the rest in. Balls to it, let's do it. But next time, if I make these, I will half that amount of rusk and then maybe just add another half an ounce of that seasoning and I think you would have an absolutely stellar modern take on that old recipe for beef sausage. So yeah, to me, it's a win. You know, it's like trawling through the archives, you know, these old recipes. If you don't try them, you don't know how it was made years ago. But like anything, you know, the sausage has been abused in the 70s and 80s. You know, they used to put anything in it. My favourite saying, lips and assholes. But uh, yeah, not a, not a bad sausage at all. I mean, I've had sausages from some nefarious butchers that I like that anyway, where they put a load of rusk in, all that water, bearing in mind you put a pound of rusk, you know, two pound of water, there's three pound there, and you're gonna get 7.99 a kilo for, so yeah, it was always a way to uh, boost your sausage and boost your profits. But thankfully, those practices are pretty much gone. But yeah, I will make these again. Like I said, I'll just reiterate, just take down the, rust by half, add another half, uh, half an ounce of seasoning, and you've nailed it. Mmm. But yeah, always good to have a go at these old recipes. Gives you a rough idea of not only what they were eating, but how we've come on as butchers. Right, so if you've liked what you've seen here today on the SRP, please click subscribe when my face comes up down here. Also check me out my social media, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at the Scott Reed Project. And if you feel like sharing the love, help the SRP along, do check out my Patreon page. So share this with your friends, like it. And if you haven't already, subscribe when my face comes up. Yes, yeah, subscribe and click that bell. And then you'll see all the funky stuff I get up to. And if you would like to see me do a few more of these old school recipes, let me know in the comments. But until next time, I'm actually full now. I just necked all them. 
go and have a lie down in the dark room. Take care, my friends. All the best. That's the best.